All right, well, enough sightseeing. Let's get to work. The storm is pushing our way. It does look like it's gonna stay more west. So uh, we'll be thinking about y'all in the mountains of North Carolina. It's looking like it's gonna be pretty bad there, but looks like we may, uh, we may not get it too bad. We'll know by this evening what it's really gonna look like. But, uh, my son that's in Florida got evacuated in Manicore back So he's somewhere relatively safe now in my, uh, in his fiance. And I've got all these zonks on up top. That's cut out so you see more of where the window's going. The plan's called for two windows, one on each side, but uh, I decided to go with only that one. I want more wall space for monitors and all that stuff. Coming around here, so I need to put a couple of zonks here. I'm gonna go ahead and when I put the board, the horizontal whaler on here, I'm gonna put it all the way across. It'll tie in corner to corner. We'll just have to duck under when we go in. That's fine. I've got all of the wood piled up from where we had all the bracing around the pools. So funny enough, I know it doesn't look like it, but just give you an idea. I'll hear how the sound changed. Give you an idea on perspective. This is the almost exact same size as the deep pool. Almost, I mean, like, to the inch. It's almost the exact same size. And once we stack it all, depth and everything. So standing in here, standing in the pool, the lower part where the pool's deep is the same size. So I don't know what it looks like for folks at home, but it's just a different sizing. Like, that one's down in a hole, and this is, uh, you know, this is up here. So anyway, just thought I'd throw that little tidbit in. It was kind of interesting, so... This takes, definitely takes longer than like when you use the plumb wall bracing because the plumb wall bracing you just put up, put screws in on the wall and then pop it out. But I think I, after using both of them a lot, I think each have their place. You know, the fab form system uh, definitely is less expensive. So if you're doing a one-off, you're a do-it-yourselfer, uh, this is a good setup to go with. Uh, as an alternative to renting bracing. Uh, and it definitely has its its uses. Like when we did the uh, round areas, it comes in really handly, handy. Uh, the pool systems, it's worked out really well because, which I could have still used the plumb on the outside on this one, but when you're doing the pools you or basements, if you need to brace from the outside, you have very limited space. And as you can see, the system, you can make it work with that. So. 
uh, just keep that in mind. You know, everything's got its pros and cons. And uh, so I really like this setup. I wanted to use it, even though I have plenty of room, I wanted to use it on here because of the horizontal whalers and just getting this wall really straight. Uh, I'll probably put some, most of the bracing will be on the inside on that one, but I'll put some of these on the outside just to make sure it's braced. But that's ready to go. I've got, these are the zaps that go on for the uh, scaffolding. So a couple questions from the last video. And this was actually, this actually threw me for a loop a couple of times too. Uh, this is not a sidewall, okay? This is the ceiling of the underground hallway. So there is a hallway underground. You've seen it a hundred times in the other videos when we're doing the basement that leads into the underground room here, okay? So this, so when it's all said and done, this gets concrete, okay? The garage will sit about where the shipping containers are in the future. And instead of that now, we talked about that. So this is all concrete and comes across here. So you will drive through here. So the portache or portico or whichever one, whatever, the the enclosed overhang space that connects this together actually starts right about where this corner is, about where that picket is. There's like a stone column that comes up and goes across. And there's one at that corner that starts and goes across. Okay. Get over here. Boom. Say, and goes to there. So the door is under cover and the door that you actually enter into the house is here not there that's actually uh was originally a laundry room that's the pet room so that's where all the guys y'all have pets i never knew all this you know i had dogs and cats growing up and we threw down a bowl of food and you know the dog did whatever and here you go but Miss Beely good. She treats them like kids. She does. We got we got more blankets for the dog and we and cats than we do for us. So anyway, this uh used to be laundry room is the pet room is where the feed bowls are, food gets stored, blankets, all that stuff anyway. So this is the actual door, little side door into the house. And that's the door. So once all said and done, they'll be right across from each other and like I said, this will all be under another slab of concrete. You won't see this. But for now, it does throw you off because it looks like, oh, this must be the sidewalk, but it's not. This is just the lid for the underground hallway. Toss it up here. And then, you gotta be thinking about it. We're gonna be stepping from here to there. So when I do this one, See how you got the, I'm gonna have to butt up and do another end. So I'm gonna do this one. I'll bring the end out further so that we walk across it. Then we usually uh, scab or sister, or sister side by side, but we scab on some uh, end pieces, but you'll see that. So there that is. And these things, fab form curls, that's, you see you got Two sets of screws, two sets of screws. So step it back just a little bit. No reason for it to be right up against it. And there you go. So I'll run two screws in each spot. Get that screwed in. Lay another one. I'll probably lay the other one further that way so that we'll see. And then two screws there. And then just repeat all the way around. And then find those... Uh, Missing ladders, and then I'll have ladders to uh, get up and down and be able to lay the rebar in the next row and stack on up.
Ta-da. <clears throat> A little bouncy. But we're used to this. Yeah, it's just better to use two by eights. If not, I would have needed probably two more zats on each side. Yeah, but it's definitely a little flexy. It's one of the things I wanted to check out. Just, if you see the long beam there, that top, that's the wall height. And there's my pterodactyl. <laughs> 